Hello everyone, Humphrey here with Router Gods, and if you're studying for your Cisco certs, particularly CCNP and CCIE, you've probably wondered, well, how the hell do I get switching inside of my virtual machine, my VMware, or my GNS3? I know that you've got like this cheapo Ethernet switch inside of GNS3. It's got some basic VLANs. You can configure some access ports and stuff like that, but nothing approaching real switching. You also have the Ether switch router, which is basically just a router with a, a switch module in it. Uh, not that exciting, and it sort of feels kludgy when you're using it. So what do you do? Well, I'm going to give you a solution that may seem utterly batshit crazy, but it's actually pretty awesome. And that is to use an Arista switch. Now, I know what you're thinking. I've finally got on, gone off the deep end, but... I'm going to show you how to set up Arista switches inside a VMware workstation. And then in a later video, I'm going to show you how to do your CCIE lab, whether with INE or Narbic, anyone. All you have to do is replace the switches, the Cisco switches, with the Arista switches, and everything will work just fine. So what are we going to cover in this video? We're going to talk about what is the Arista VOS. So VOS is basically, think of VOS as iOS. It's their operating system for switches and it's based off of Linux, which is pretty cool. And if you want to go completely nuts, it is, since it's based on Linux, they let you get into the Linux part. So they don't really block you from that. You could just go completely nuts with it. I'm going to tell you where to get VOS. It's very easy and it's free. The necessary files that you're going to need to download, there's two files, and it's about 415, 20 megs, 420 megs. We're going to go over the VMware workstation setup, and we're going to boot it up for the first time and play around a little bit. All right, what is VOS? Well, VOS is their operating system based on Linux. I think it's based on Fedora with obviously some secret sauce. And thanks to Arista, it is available to download for free off of their website, arista.com slash en slash login. And you don't actually need to have any Arista gear to have a login. All you need to do is make a user account. You click right there and enter in your information. Now, one word of warning, you cannot use a cheapo email address. By cheapo email address, something like a Gmail, a Hotmail, uh, those type of email addresses Yahoo would be thrown in there. You're going to need to use your corporate email address. So for me, it's easy because I work at a you know, big company that makes orange chicken. But for you, if you're not working right now, there's a couple ways of getting around this. You could make a website uh, for 10 bucks through whatever service like DreamHost or heaven forbid, GoDaddy, and then use the email address off of there. You could probably find some other email service that's not Hotmail or Yahoo that's different enough or small enough to where it doesn't hit the trigger for Arista. So just one of the hoops you have to jump through. But once you have everything logged in or you you've successfully made a login you're going to go down here going to log in with your username and password and when the download page comes up you're going to scroll down and it's going to be vos just expand that out now notice cisco listen to this video this is very easy front page scroll down download your shit okay i'm done with that so the two files you're going to need to download a boot dash VOS dot ISO that is basically a virtualized CD drive. This virtual CD is going to boot the VMDK file. VMDK file is a virtual hard drive. So it's kind of like in the old days that you popped in a floppy, it read off the floppy, and then it booted into a partition on the hard drive. Kind of like that. If you don't know what a floppy is, you're lucky. So you're going to need to download the dot ISO up here and the VMDK file. So right now the current version is 4.14.2f. Download those, put them into a folder. I've put mine into Arista-source. Back it up somewhere. And what you see here, it's uh, 4 gigs. Now, right here it says 600 megs. When you download it's actually 400 megs. Uh, what I did here is I converted it for a version 10 or whatever. So this is done afterwards. But what you're going to see is you're going to see about 400 megs. All right, after you do that, open up VMware Workstation. 
we're going to create a new virtual machine and click next and next again you're going to say I'm going to create or I'm going to install the operating system later and over here we're going to select Linux now very important make sure you're selected on Fedora 64-bit because by default it probably will not be selected on that but Fedora 64-bit is what you're looking for click next we're going to call this Arista magic now how about awesomeness all right Arista awesomeness click next number processors just leave that default and the amount of memory you're going to give this machine you can get away with one gig one gig's fine if you have some RAM to spare give it 2048 click next for the network type you're going to use host only networking we're going to add some more network adapters later and click next SCSI controller LSI logic is fine okay very important disk type you're gonna select IDE and click next and you've got the VMDK file so we're gonna select use an existing virtual disk and you guessed it we're gonna browse to that VMDK file and click open and click next customize the hardware let's go down from top memory you're gonna leave processors you're gonna leave CD drive CD we're gonna connect at power on and you're gonna select use an ISO image and we're gonna to browse to that dot ISO file let's click on advanced and you can see right here it's on ID 1 colon 0 we're gonna do the drop down and we're gonna do IDE 0 colon 1 um, if you don't know what this is don't worry about it but back in the stone ages of computers with IDE drives and if you're born any time past 1995 ish you've probably never seen an IDE drive but these cables were, were horrible they had a whole bunch of pins on them I bent them all the time you just use some screwdriver or pliers to to bend them back but you had a primary and you had a slave so we're gonna make this 01 which is slave and click OK for network adapter we're gonna add some network adapters here let's just add network adapter host only and we're just gonna keep going here we're gonna go up to uh, four network adapters and the reason for four is one of them is gonna be used for your management interface and then the others are gonna be actual network interfaces okay I think I had one selected as NAT I'm gonna change that guy to host actually let's do this I've got a VMNet 9 that has DHCP disabled and actually that's what you want to do so I'm gonna show you how to set up that VMNet 9 after I finish this virtual machine setup so all your network adapters put them on the VMNet that has DHCP disabled and the reason for that is when this switch boots up it's got what's called zero configuration or zero touch configuration something like that and it will it will stay a little bit looking for DHCP you kind of don't want that to happen on USB controller we'll uncheck this doesn't matter about USB sound card we're gonna uncheck the sound card and we don't want a printer and close that out and click finish now on this screen go back to hard drive and see how there's hard drive here click on advanced and just make sure that it is selected on IDE 00 so IDE 00 is the hard drive and IDE 01 is the CD drive and we'll cancel out of there and then to make a VMNet that does not have DHCP you're going to go up to edit and virtual network editor all right with virtual network editor up you can see I've got a VMNet 9 now if you don't have a VMNet 9 you can add a network then call it VMNet 9 and then click down here for host only and then uncheck or make sure it's unchecked use local DHCP service to distribute IP addresses so I have that unchecked and then click OK in my case I'm gonna click cancel and I think we're all set we're gonna click on power on virtual machine and let's see what happens it's going through the boot process awesome starting new kernel 
looking good so far. Let's take a look at our task manager, see how much our CPU is running right here. 14%, not too bad, and it is kind of distributing the load across all the CPUs, or most of the CPUs. Okay, we're up and running. You can see the login looks very much like a like a Linux login. To log in, it's going to be admin, password is blank. Of course, you're going to change, <laughs> definitely should change that later. Now, I know all of you Cisco people out there, you're going, okay, Humphrey, you just told me I'm going to use this for my CCIE training, but damn it, I don't know what, how to run Arista gear. What commands should I use? I'm going to blow your mind in five seconds. Enable works just like Cisco. Conf T. Conf T works just like Cisco. Question mark works just like Cisco. Let me exit out of here. Show version runs just like Cisco. Show interface status shows your interfaces. See where I'm going with this? About 80% of your commands are the same. And if we go into interface, if we want to configure something int e1 question mark here you can set ip address you know you, you do all types of stuff in here you could set trunks you could do of course access ports it's like nothing to an arista switch but this video was just showing you how to get this installed boot it up not a problem in the next video i'm going to show you how to actually run this in your ccie lab replacing all the Cisco switches with Arista gear. Once again, my name's Humphrey Chung with Router Gods. Have fun and happy labbing.